Uh, oh, right. The uh, the language integration. Didn't even get to that. The um, language yes. bindings. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so our whole protocol, as it were, is really just JSON packets flying back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, we don't do a lot of really data dense transfer. Like, this is not a protocol that is made for closing like high frequency, high accuracy uh, control loops. Like don't don't control your car's braking system with butt plug, um, but because uh, like I mean I, a lot of the hardware that we work with like mm -hmm. it barely works in the first place. It's like okay, so there's four vibration levels to this thing, and it'll take three commands per second. Oh boy! Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't really push a ton of data, <laughs> but um, the great thing about this is though. So yeah, we just use JSON, and then that flies over web sockets because we wanted to make this accessible to as many platforms as possible. Mm -hmm. So not only does like butt plug itself is written in Rust mm -hmm. because if the concurrency is going in your butt, it better be fearless. Um, and. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's, it's been a very fun language to work in. I mm -hmm. used to, um, be the, uh, device interfaces lead on Firefox at Mozilla. Uh, so I, I learned Rust at the mothership uh -huh. and, uh, <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, uh, but yeah, so the, we started in Rust, mm -hmm. uh, well, actually we started in JavaScript and C Sharp, and then we moved to Rust once, um, mm -hmm. uh, async came in with, uh, 136 in 2019. Um, and, uh, but we've got, yeah, we've got C Sharp, we've got JavaScript, TypeScript, we've got C++, we've got, uh, Python, Haskell, uh, we actually compiled to WASM. Uh, so the Rust library that does all of our hardware access, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I absolutely did this as a stunt hack, and now people use it seriously, and I'm really regretting that. Uh, but all, so all of our hardware access that works in Bluetooth mm -hmm. works in a web browser that supports web Bluetooth. So you can run purely in a web browser through our WASM library. Um, I just yeah, I wanted to do it because I, I was like, ah, I think I can get it done. It'll, it'll be funny. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so and we're seeing more language and game integ uh, game yeah, engine game engine integrations integration are also well. super important. So uh, Unity, Unreal, uh, Godot, Twine. Um, I think we got a game maker one now. Uh, I see RPG so, maker here. Yeah, like really, we want to make it as easy as possible for anyone to bring these integrations into their library. And I'm not saying we're like anywhere near finished with that yet. Like, there's still a lot of pain points within the library, but we're certainly working on it. And that is our like overall goal, though, is just make it so that you can do things as easy as possible. So, okay, you, you mentioned swapping over to Rust there, and every time I, I talk to someone who does Rust, you know, I've, I've, I've got to ask them because <laughs> it, it leads to fun... It, it, look, I get fun comments from it because you have these people who are just insufferable about hating Rust, and it's so fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh I, oh, I love them so much. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when they have yeah. no idea what they're talking about. That's even better. When they're just like... They, uh -huh. they, they know developer words, but they're not actually... They have no computer science background. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, uh, so yeah, I started with Rust around the 0 0.5 era. Oh, um, you're really I mean, early like, then. Okay. Well, so um, me and uh, Nico, the Rust like design lead for many, many years, may still be for all I know. We started at Mozilla on the same day. Um, because we were both in the research group. I started, uh, he was on Rust. I was on Firefox OS, which at the time was just starting. The, oh, that was the thing. The, um, <laughs> I forgot about that yes. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi, first full-time engineer on that one. Um, <laughs> oh, um, just, just, so, yeah, sorry, sidetrack. I need to just bring this one up. Firefox OS oh, yeah. was Mozilla's attempt to compete with Android. Um, you probably haven't heard of it for a while because... It was abandoned in 2015. 
It's no, no. It is still up and running to this day. Oh. So it is called KaiOS these days. K A I O S. Okay. 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 Um, it now run, it doesn't run on smartphones. It runs on what we call feature phones. So there was a company like since this was Mozilla, of course, all of Firefox OS was open sourced. Um, there were. There's a lot of opinions and a lot of events that happened around the project that <laughs> made it go the way that it did that I'm not going to get into right now because that's another interview entirely. <laughs> but um, someone came through, picked it up, and put it on feature phones, and now it's in hundreds of millions of phones in India. Wow. Okay. I had no so, idea about yes. that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It still exists. Um, there's still some of the original engineers from Firefox OS that moved over and work on that. It's not it's not a Mozilla project anymore. It's a different company now. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Wow, I have to dig into that one. I might have to do a video on that. That's actually really cool. Hmm. Um, sorry, we got sidetracked. You would uh, Rust. But yes, Rust. you were one of the early people uh, involved Rust. in that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I was I was just trying to use it back then. I had nothing to do with like the actual development or anything. Sure, sure. I played around like with Rust. I played around with Servo as it was being developed. Um, actually, funny enough, the so in writing Butt Plug, mm -hmm. when we moved over to Rust, there was no cross-platform Bluetooth LE library uh in rust so i had to take a whole bunch of half done projects and kind of smush them together into a project we now called btle plug mm -hmm. um and um so that is uh now the most popular bluetooth le library in rust uh and oh, wait, the wait. Mac weren't you, didn't you get into it uh, wasn't it like someone who was a post oh, about this yeah. who was like i didn't yeah, realize there anything was... to do with butt plug io they got very angry about it yeah, we had a PR from someone who was trying to, they were trying to fix um, a Windows 10 compatibility issue mm -hmm. for like an old version of Windows 10. And they did it by like dropping an error. And I was like, can we, can we not do that? I kind of like my errors. Can we, mm -hmm. can we do it this way? And so I like, I just asked for a fix on this PR. And the person was like, no, you ran butt plug. I had to look up what butt plug means, and <laughs> I don't like that. And um, it was uh, it was one of the more interesting uh, responses I've gotten to a PR uh, <laughs> a PR fix request. But uh, <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> um, I mean, like the funny thing about BTLE plug is that that's I've actually had friends uh, that work in uh, like the defense industry tell me that uh, they've been writing Rust for defense and government contracts, and you have to actually enumerate like all of the open source projects you use. Uh -uh. And they have not been able to use BTLE plug because it sounds too much like butt plug, and the government didn't like that. And I was just like, oh hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I just want to imagine the meeting where the government, like the military, comes in and is like, "Nope, you cannot use that library. We cannot have that in a military grant." <laughs> my my, like, I didn't. I, I wasn't specifically aiming for pacifism with my naming mm -hmm. <laughs> here, but okay. Cons considering <laughs> some of the other dumb military development stories, like that, that's not even like the 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 top of the i like I I've heard. <laughs> You probably you probably heard people meme about this one a bunch of times, like um, the missile control system that was built, where they left a memory leak in it because the missiles would land before the memory leak caused problems. Oh yeah, yeah. You you, you just need to know where you're going. You don't really have to worry about what's going to happen when you get there. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Sorry, I keep but, getting, uh, yeah, I keep like, getting on I keep yeah. sidetracking you. Sorry about that. For no, it's, it's fine. So, um, uh, anyways, yeah. So BTLE plug, which mm -hmm. is the Bluetooth library we use in Butt Plug now, the Mac OS Bluetooth core comes from Servo. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, there's just like all sorts of interplay between like my library and what I did at Mozilla and everything else. But uh, at the end of the day, I spent twenty some years writing C plus plus, and I just got sick of finding new ways to shoot myself in the foot with every single spec. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I've also done multiple versions of C. I, by trade, I'm a firmware engineer. Um, and I, uh, I, I just got sick of 
fucking up and <laughs> rest lets me do that less and that's it that's all yeah <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, I always hear these dumb arguments like, oh, well, that's just a skill issue. Like, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, it, it, okay. It, it's, it's like I, I, I use these computer things to make my life easier. Like, and if, if there's a thing I can do that makes my life easier on the on the make my life easier box, I will do that. Like, I, I don't I, have time to, like, prove my shit, cause, yeah. like, in a point or arithmetic or whatever. Like, if, if you want to, like, an example that I've been using is, let's say you want to, like, cut a piece of wood. Would you rather use a tape measure and some machine to cut it or just, like, eye it and use a handsaw? Like, you yep. can do both. You can do great work yeah. with either solution people have. But one of them's going to take away a lot of mistakes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, especially in embedded, like, that's kind of like the next frontier that I'm really excited about. Like, Rust embedded and that ability to really make sure, like, you know where your memory is when you can and regulate, like, permissions to like what's writing to what pins and whatnot oh it's fantastic mm -hmm. um so i yeah i'm looking forward to making less mistakes and if that makes some people mad well they can go fuck themselves but not with my software i i was um i remember when rust was first gaining popularity because i was in i was in university in 20 what 17 2016 something like that and yeah. i rem i had this one friend who was this die hard rust fan who was like like the, I, I don't remember like if 1.0 was out by then i don't remember exactly where along the timeline it is but like People weren't really talking about Rust like they are today. You know, in the Linux space, you see all of these rewrite projects in Rust. You know, it's just the yeah. same project but written in Rust again. But, like, there's <laughs> one guy who was like, Rust is great, Rust is awesome, and, you know, uh, hey, whatever. And I, I kind of feel like, I don't know if the same thing's going to happen, but I kind of feel like Zig is in that same place today. Like, you have those couple of people who are like, Zig is amazing, Zig is so great. And I feel like in, like, 10 years from now, you're probably going to see that same level of adoption. I, I don't know, because Rust obviously has solved a lot of these problems that, you know, weren't really being solved in this way before maybe it won't happen but i do feel like there is going to be some sort of ecosystem there where zig is able to thrive as well and by that point there's going to be an another language that comes along there's always going to be like you know the the new language that is the exciting thing that people want to learn like in the 90s that was java then you know it, c sharp came along and you know things yeah. javascript came along and yeah, yeah. there's always there's always the new exciting thing